Drugs have become a huge part of our society, but there are plenty more in the pipeline that could further change how we live our lives, for better or worse. One such group of drugs is cognitive enhancers. Cognitive enhancers can be used to treat Alzheimer's disease, schizophrenics, ADHD, and even stroke victims. However, they can also be used by healthy people. Surgeons use them to remain alert in long operations, and the same goes for US Air Force fighter pilots in lengthy missions. There are some drugs accepted by society, others cause great controversy. Nevertheless, drug use is still prominent in the world, so should these new drugs be accepted, and which ones? The most widely used drug, caffeine, is almost globally legal, and also classified as a cognitive enhancer. It is extracted from plants and found in tea, coffee and energy drinks primarily. It is a stimulant, which means it causes an increased release of neurotransmitters in the brain, making the user more alert and awake. So how does this work? On a much smaller level, your brain is made out of millions of specialised cells called neurons. These neurons transmit electrical impulses to one another, which can travel down the spinal cord and throughout the rest of your body, controlling both voluntary movement and involuntary processes. For an electrical signal to get from one neuron to another, it must cross a small gap between the two cells called a synapse. Tiny chemicals called neurotransmitters are released from one neuron to travel across the synapse and bind with a receptor on the other neuron, creating an identical electrical impulse. Having more of these neurotransmitters means that the impulse is transferred more quickly. Stimulants are not without risks. They often increase blood pressure, putting more stress on the heart, which could lead to heart attack, stroke and other serious medical conditions. Caffeinated gum has been tested by the United States military to be used in strenuous situations, and due to its small potential to be harmful, caffeine is sometimes forgotten to be a drug at all. Modafinil is another cognitive enhancer, usually used to treat narcolepsy. It increases neurotransmission in the hippocampus, which is linked to the creation of long-term memory. It also produces glutamate, inhibiting the release of GABA, which controls the levels of other neurotransmitters such as dopamine. The overall effect is an increase in alertness and focus. Because of this increase in concentration, the drug has become popular with university students for assisting with their revision. Is this a fair thing to do? Will this peer pressure other students into taking the drug so they can keep up with the work of people using modafinil? Memory itself is a very interesting concept. If impulses are repeatedly crossing a synapse, the neurons actually grow to become closer together, allowing the signal to be transferred more quickly because the neurotransmitters have less distance to travel. So when a thought is repeated more often, a stronger connection is formed. A survey by Newsnight and New Scientist magazine was conducted concerning the use of cognitive enhancers by the public. Out of 716 responses, 38% had taken cognitive enhancers. Furthermore, 40% of these had purchased them online without prescription. 98% of the users said that they would try them again. One particular risk with this is the purchase of the drugs online. This is because there is no way of telling if the drug has been laced with other chemicals, whether it be cheaper production for the supplier or otherwise, these impurities may be extremely harmful. Another danger of modafinil is that there are no long-term studies carried out, so long-term effects are largely unknown. A study was conducted that showed mild headaches and nausea as side effects, but these were also noted in the placebo group of the same study. Modafinil does seem to have a low chance of overdose. An attempted suicide failed with a 4,500 mg dose of the drug. The person involved did experience insomnia, increased heart rate and excitation. A final subgroup of cognitive enhancers are amphetamines. They are used by US Air Force pilots to stay awake, however can cause some side effects including decreased appetite, hallucinations and addiction. Despite this, they are still used and to great success. Unless governing laws and public stigma towards drugs change, drug companies will have difficulty licensing drugs that are not designed for treatment. If the drugs are allowed to be used, a huge governmental campaign would have to be carried out in order to educate both adults and children on the potential benefits, but also dangers, of using the drugs. Other issues include peer pressure and employment, addiction, and whether such a large amount of money should be invested in the drugs rather than less fortunate people without basic human needs. With all of the different things that these drugs could affect, education, sport, research, recreation and people's daily lives, many considerations must be taken to decide whether this will be a step forward for society or a step back. Created using Powtoon.